OP returned from a month-long trip, and her roommate has moved all her things into her room and has been living there. Hi there. I'm writing this on a throwaway because, to be honest, I never thought I'd need to post here, but what can you do? So I moved into this flat about eight months ago. I met Lana online on a roommate website, and we clicked well. She's a bit younger, but seems mature. We quickly agreed to be roommates both of us were under time constraints to find a place to live, but have gotten on really well so far up until this. Our flat has two bedrooms, and to be frank, my room is clearly the better one. It's bigger and has built-in wardrobes. When looking for the flat, I found the place first on my own and put down a deposit to take it off the market while I found another roommate. The flat was perfect for cheap rent, and my aunt manages the property, so I was keen to snap it up before anyone else did. The area it's in is popular, so I wasn't really worried about not finding someone to room with. Because of the above, and because I was there first, I took the bigger room naturally. When showing potential roommates including Lana around, I was sure to show the smaller room and say, this would be your room. We moved in eight months ago, and it's been a happy family. I never heard Lana complain about her room. Because I have about 6x the wardrobe space that she does, I told her she's welcome to store her off-season clothes in there, or whatever she wants to store, as long as she's not popping in every morning to get dressed. She was happy with this. Just over a month ago, I went traveling. Now I'm not the biggest fan of having people in my room, but I told Lana if she had someone stay her sister, friends from home, they could sleep in my bed. She said thanks, and as she's been such a great roommate and rarely has guests except her boyfriend, I didn't worry at all. I came back yesterday. I was exhausted from the flight and traveling, and just wanted to shower and sleep. As I walked in, Lana was in the living room with her boyfriend. We said hello and hugged. We had a very quick catch-up, blah blah. Then I dragged my suitcase to my room, opened the door, and found it full of stuff that was not mine. I kind of yelled, what the f? and briefly thought I was so jet-lagged I was confused, but I opened the door to Lana's room and saw all my stuff. I walked into the living room and asked Lana what was going on, and she said, Oh sorry, I forgot to mention. We put my stuff in your room just because it's bigger and you weren't here, and you said I could use it. I was honestly so tired I could have passed out then, so I probably wasn't in the best state, and I told her to move it all back immediately. She said they were in the middle of making dinner, and I looked tired, so I should have slept. Her boyfriend then said, and anyway, you pay the same rent, so isn't it fair that you both get the big room at some point? I was getting really frustrated and could feel tears welling up hysterical from lack of sleep. So I just said, we'll deal with this tomorrow, and it's getting moved back. And then I went to sleep in my room. I've woken up now, and I'm so pissed off. Lana's at work, so I can't talk to her. But what should I do when she's home? I feel like this is going to turn into an argument. I don't think it'll be as simple as, okay, let's swap now that you're home. TLDR. I went traveling for a month and told my roommate she could use my room for guests if needed. While I was gone, she swapped all our stuff and moved into my much bigger and better bedroom. I've never had a problem with her before, but she doesn't seem like she's planning on swapping back. What do I do when I speak to her after work? Edit. I've taken the advice of most people on this thread and moved my stuff back. It's taken hours and I'm knackered, but I think if I left it another night, it would be a real problem. I sent her a text when I was almost done in case she kicked up a SHT storm and came home to say, Hi Lana, I hope you're having a nice day at work. Just to let you know, I'm moving my stuff back into my room. I didn't want you coming home and walking into the wrong one. Yes, I'm petty. I'll be talking to her when she gets in, because this is out of character for her, to the point of being bizarre. She's never been anything but a model roommate, so I'm going to give her a chance before we're done. If she wants to be reasonable and have a chat about rent portions, I'm happy to do that. She's never had a problem with the rent before, and honestly, I've never had uneven rent amounts in any place I've ever lived whether I had a bigger room or a smaller room. But a lot of people here are saying it's the norm, so I'm open to talking about it if she's not ridiculous. Edit 2. Lana should be home in a bit. I'll update when I can. Edit 3. Hi everyone, I've got about a million messages asking for an update. But last night was a bit mad, and I'm still pretty jet-lagged. So sorry, but I went to sleep. Anyway, here we go. So, as you know, I texted Lana to tell her I moved my stuff back. She didn't reply to me. Fine whatever, but she didn't kick off, so I figured we were okay. I told my aunt what had happened, who was as baffled as all of you, and I told her it was probably all sorted, just keeping her in the loop. I also told my boyfriend, who works about five minutes down the road. He offered to come round in case Lana's boyfriend came round. 
but I told him not to because then we'd be ganging up on Lana. He insisted on going for a coffee with his mate a couple roads away in case we needed backup. Which is a bit ridiculous, but very cute of him. So I did get myself a glass of wine while waiting for Lana. Not because I was nervous. I just like wine, and she came home. I was sitting in the living room and gave her a very cold hi when she walked in. She sort of froze, bag in hand, and her eyes darted between me and my not her our bedroom door. She blurted, Did you do it? And I said, What? Move the rooms back. Yeah, of course. And her eyes went all wide, and she dropped her bag and ran into the bathroom. I could hear her talking on the phone, so I was like, Yippee, I guess Tom's coming round. I heard the door unlock, and I was about to go full Hulk on how psycho she is when she came out of the door and stood between our bedrooms. Their doors are adjacent, and she just stared between them both, breathing heavily. It was really odd. Then I noticed she was crying and getting a bit panicky, so I asked what was going on. She burst into tears and said, OMG. He's going to kill me. And just sobbed, so yeah. It was the boyfriend's idea completely, as a lot of us suspected. She's honestly always been a perfect roommate, which is kind of why I came to this sub. If she were generally an arsehole, I would have known how to act, if you know what I mean. Anyway, Lana has a bit of a breakdown. And it turns out Poss Tom has always been a bit of a Poss, very jealous which I always saw hints of. But Lana never mentioned, so I didn't, and has amplified his possishness while I've been away. When I left, he just finished school and basically moved in unannounced. And when she'd mention he hadn't been home in days, he'd give her the, what, don't you love me? I treat you so well. You're so selfish, blah blah, shd, and refused to move. She showed me the texts he sent her absolutely horrific stuff things like, ring me in the next five minutes or we're over. And, send me a picture of you at your desk with something showing today's date so I know you're at work. Just abusive stuff. On to the room. As we guessed, he moved it. He did it while she was at work, which is actually a bit gross thinking of him going through my stuff. And I'm considering somehow implying I have crabs or something he could catch just to make him squirm a bit, but I'll work on it. Lana came home and said, What are you doing? He made out it was just temporary, and that I wouldn't mind such a gentleman speaking on my behalf, and he would move it back, and he was doing it for her, and she was so selfish, etc. When it was a few days before I came back, Lana suggested moving it back, and he completely denied it. He said that, and told her it was her idea to move it, and he only did what she told him, but it's staying now, or she'd be sorry. So basically, Tom is a prick, Lana sobbed, apologized and cried, and I fed her wine. She didn't want to see Tom who obviously assumed he lived there now, so I texted him from her phone, saying our landlady my aunt was coming round for an inspection, and staying for dinner after with my family, and he couldn't come over tonight. He sent a lot of begging and whiny texts, and then went on the offensive and called Lana, a liar. So I rang my aunt, explained everything, and had her write us a fake landlord, email mentioning the visit, and how she was looking forward to fajitas, because she's an absolute babe, and I make good packet fajitas, which we forwarded on to Tom. He left her alone for the rest of the night, apart from a few texts. I'm not entirely sure what we do about Tom. Lana sounds like she wants to break up, judging from her crying and screaming. I hate him, I hate him, I hate him, into her whine. I think she's scared though. I checked with her, and he doesn't have a key, so that's a relief. I've told my aunt everything, and she said she is happy to ban him from the flat. But Lana would need to break up with him first and get all that sorted. Thanks to everyone for the advice. I know it wasn't the most popcorny update, but hopefully Lana will be okay. And we're going to be doing some girly SHD this week and avoiding Tom. And yeah, God knows what will happen. Relevant comments and additional information. Does Tom have a set of keys to the flat? There's only two keys to the flat. Mine and Lana's. I gave mine to my mom while I was away in case she needed to pop in for me, but she never did. Lana has one, and she says she didn't give it to Tom at any point. She just buzzed him in. I'm going to speak to my aunt and see what she reckons about changing the locks. I'd need to verify it with her beforehand anyway. I don't see that there's any way Tom could have a copy, but you never know. As the roommate's name on the lease, her name is on the contract, which is equal to mine. The deposit I paid was a holding fee to take the property off the market which was later deducted from my half of the actual deposit. So she doesn't owe me any money. I'm hoping the boyfriend will not be around when she comes home. She's been a reasonable person for the seven months prior to this. So I can't help, but think he's influenced her a bit. I'm very curious to know how much he's been staying over. If the lease has a limit on guests, he is 100%, not moving in after school, not a hope in hell. I advertised for one roommate. I wrote no couples in capital letters on the ad. It's not happening. 
Our lease has a guest clause, something like no longer than three weeks over a three-month period. I'm not sure. I'll need to look at it. It's likely that both of our boyfriends have stayed longer than that over the past eight months, and the landlord has never had an issue with them. If he starts staying every night, I will be bringing this up. Update. Two months later. I originally posted this to relationships, but it got deleted, and the moderators told me it would be better suited here. Feel free to read the original post below for background. Hi everyone. It's been a busy month since my last post, and I logged back into this account out of curiosity and saw quite a few people message me requesting an update. So here we are. Sorry it took so long, but things have calmed down now. So shortly after my last post, Lana broke up with Tom. She was quite scared to do it because he's a psycho, and it took two weeks between the last post and the actual breakup. During that time, she didn't let him come around or see her. Luckily, she remembered that Tom had never had chicken pox as a kid, so we pretended my nephew had caught chicken pox and had to stay with us because my brother's wife had never had it and couldn't risk getting shingles. It worked, luckily, and he stayed away. She told her family and close friends about what he'd been like in case. He contacted them to get in touch with her and lied about what happened and then texted him, saying she wanted to break up. Well, he blew the F up. He called her every name under the sun, switched back to apologizing and saying she was the love of his life, then said she'd never find someone like him. Then he would die without her. Then he wanted to kill her. Then they were soulmates. It was insane. He started messaging me too, telling me I was an evil bee who had ruined his perfect wife, lol, k then, and as predicted, her family and friends got messages too. We both turned our phones off to ignore it and just watched TV. Later, I briefly switched mine on, and I had a lot of messages from my friends telling me to block some guy on my social media. It was Tom calling me every imaginative combination of the C word, he could think of all over my public Instagram page. There were even a few racial slurs, which was odd because we're both white. But okay, Lana had already blocked him on everything. But silly me, I forgot to make my Instagram private. The next day, he called Lana's office, she was so embarrassed. It was awful to tell her he was driving down to our flat. She rang me, and I rang my aunt who you remember manages the property, who told us it was time to call the police. We filed a report about Tom, and they said to update us on the situation. In the UK, you need to go to court to actually get a restraining order, so we haven't as such, but the evidence is all there and documented if we need to go that far. The police called Tom at our request and told him they'd seen the messages and to turn his car around, because if he turned up at our door, he'd be arrested. The police officers here are amazing, can I just say? Tom managed to SHT himself hard enough to not show up after that, so we were fine for a week. Then the post came. Tom started sending letters. Threats and soppy. I love you SHD, flowers. Then a pizza that we had to pay for we were actually hungry, so we ate it. He signed us up for a magazine subscription. It was bizarre. We went to the police again. They filed everything, but Lana didn't want to go to court. I don't blame her. She was incredibly stressed by the whole thing. So two weeks ago, I took my aunt and mother out to dinner. I told them both about the situation, and my goddess of an aunt had an idea. She manages about 30 properties, not just the one we live at, as we have a few that are unoccupied now with school finishing. She told me she would show us around all the two bedrooms she had, and we could live in any of them for the same rent we pay now and just transfer over our deposit and fees, as long as there were no damages to deduct. And we helped do a deep clean to get it ready for the next tenant. We found one within a five-minute drive that's just as lovely and, to anyone concerned about the previous rent dispute, has equally sized bedrooms. So we moved. Which is why the last two weeks have been manic but we're settled in now. Tom has now been informed that we've moved because the stuff he sent since has been returned. Lana and I are completely out of contact with him, and anyone who visits us is sure not to pass on our address to Tom. Also, I apologize to Lana about the issue with paying the same amount of rent. She said she had never had a problem with it, and she said that's how she had always done it through university and with other roommates. She refused to take any money from me, but I've decided I will be funding the weekly flat wine sessions for the future. It's been a long, long month, and even though my traveling tan has faded, things are great now. Thanks for all your advice before guys, even the ones I didn't agree with. And let's all pray to baby Jesus that I have a calmer living situation from now on. TLDR. Lana split with Tom. Tom went insane. We called the police, and they scared him off, so we haven't needed to get a restraining order yet. We moved to a flat nearby so he doesn't know where we live anymore. And we're slowly cultivating a flat wine collection 
but quickly drinking it. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.